Good afternoon, everybody. Those of you with your headsets in, I hope you can hear me. Excellent. There's no point in me asking the people at the back of the room to sit down because they can't hear me. Um, that was so welcome everyone. This is the uh, the traditional uh, at IGF SICAN forum, which is an opportunity for um, people to come along and. Um, ask lots of questions and have lots of discussion. And it's nice to see some um, new faces in the room, as well as some old faces, um, who I will not name. Um, so thank you all for coming. The format's very loose, uh, but we are going to start with um, a work. There'll be a short technical pause while um, the chair and the CEO get uh, headsets. Bahir, can you? So, as I was saying, um, this is going to be a very casual form. Um, we'll take questions on anything you want to talk about, but we've got some couple of thing, a couple of things that we want to talk to you about and tell you about. And um, we're going to start with um, we're going to start with some welcoming words from uh, chair, the chair of ICANN, uh, Dr. Steve Crocker. So, Steve, over to you to say hi. Welcome, everybody. It's a uh, pleasure. Um, I see a mixture of uh, familiar faces and, uh, fortunately, some people that I don't recognize, so we're not just talking to ourselves here. Um, it's my pleasure as chairman of the board of uh, ICANN to welcome you and uh, kick off this session uh, in uh, a very few seconds, I will turn things over to Fadi, who uh, has a great deal more substance and eloquence than I do. Um, this is a uh, forum about ICANN, and one of the things that uh, we try to be conscious about is that ICANN lives in a much larger ecosystem uh, and is only one small portion of uh, Internet governance, and I think that's the most appropriate kind of comment to make in this Internet governance forum. And uh, the, uh, the success of Internet governance in, in overall and the success of ICANN in particular depends very strongly, in my view, on the cooperation and uh, uh, smooth functioning across multiple portions of the ecosystem. And so with that, I'll turn things over to Fadi to actually talk about ICANN. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just a, uh, a quick message because, uh, as Chris said, it would be great if we can make this a more interactive session. Uh, many friends in the audience, many new people that I ha we haven't met before, so we should just open the floor and, and listen and talk and chat a little bit about ICANN. Uh, but maybe just a few words to start. Um, I think um, many of you have now heard uh, about the new season starting at ICANN, a new season of uh, really opening up ICANN, removing uh, the fortress walls and going to the world uh, with our message, with our mission, with our activities, and getting closer to the stakeholders. Uh, Akram and I were just reviewing some expansion plans for ICANN uh, in Los Angeles and Washington, and both of us agreed today to stop them. So we will buy no more real estate for our people and instead focus on growing offices overseas and reaching out to the world. So the new ICANN is an ICANN that will, frankly, uh, 
uh, instead of waiting for the people to come to us, we will go to the world. And that also means that we will make it easier to work with ICANN. We will make it more obvious for people to engage with ICANN. Our structures must be made easier. The engagement has to be simpler. And people should understand how to participate. We will invest time and effort to make that happen. This is my first IGF. Uh, and coming on the heels of Toronto, which is the ICANN uh, trimester meeting that we just held, uh, it's obviously been um, quite an intense uh, second meeting. Having said that, I must tell you as a first time comer, how many people here first time in IGF? Okay, so most of you are veterans, right? There's five of us only, first time. Um, I think this is a very substantive forum, very substantive. I was actually, frankly, very impressed. I have held uh, meetings through this week, engaged in uh, uh, dialogue and bilaterals this week that have been immensely meaningful to our mission uh, and very useful. In fact, we have come out of this forum with new ideas, with new ideas. So it wasn't just about ICANN meeting people and letting them know what we do. We actually learned a lot. I have gained a lot of knowledge, uh, built new friendships, new relationships. This is what it's about. This is what the IGF is about. And it's fantastic. So for those that accuse the IGF to be just a place where people talk, well, we need to talk. You know, we're not just building code. You know, we're, we need to talk. We need to agree. We need to discuss. We need to hear each other. And what happened this week substantively here for me at IGF was very, very useful. Very useful. So uh, I, I am personally a great supporter of this forum now. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I can, has been, and will continue to be uh, for good reason. For good reason. This is substance. And finally, just on some of the things we did here, of course, uh, as many of you know, I had uh, a very frank and substa substantive discussion with uh, uh, Dr. Hamadoun Touré, which, is, uh, which I think advanced the level of our discussion with him to a new level, as he called it, to a new season as well. Uh, the same has happened with the new uh, uh, undersecretary for uh, UNDESA. Uh, Mr. Wu and I had very uh, good discussions that I think allow us to uh, exchange uh, ideas and work better together and support each other. Uh, and I've had uh, also substantive meetings with uh, many, many countries and many, uh, not just government delegations, but also individuals, businesses, uh, uh, users who are here uh, trying to make their voices heard. So I'm, I very much, I'm very, very pleased with the dialogue that happened here. And I look forward to see you in Bali, I hear, Indonesia, in Indonesia next time. Uh, so we'll look forward to that. Uh, and we'll have uh, a lot of good coffee, given that the Indonesians produce good coffee there. So, All right, so with that, I hand it back to our well, great host here. Thanks, Fadi. It's, so you've got a chance to ask Fadi questions about anything, really, uh, perhaps under the broad heading of ICANN rather than anything at all. But who wants to start with a question? I'll be amazed if someone doesn't have a question. Okay. Well, you know, you obviously haven't said anything controversial enough. Then. Ah, I, I see, I knew that would happen. If you wait long enough. Can I have the other handheld? I get to be the microphone fairy as well. Which is great. Push it right up. Hi. Yeah. Pat Kane Verisign. Um, last night we had I was having some discussions on Twitter last night about the difference between IGF and ICANN. And the one thing that came to mind is that it's much more difficult to make bingo cards for the IGF. So, but but really, it's as we're as we're talking through it, ICANN really is about is better about getting business done from from my perspective. But the discussions are all about. What, what, what are we going to do for policy? What are we going to do? And then we have these great after discussions, either at the bar or back at the hotel, 
and there's really no forum here at the IGF to have those after discussions because where, where, our, where our venues are together, they are you know, with, with where the hotel is. We have better conversations while we're on here. Everything's distributed. We had a lot of good, there's a lot of good things going on at the IGF, and I think the IGF, from my perspective, is more in, is, is better for industry. And so I'd like to be able to bring some of those discussions because the, the discussions that we're having here are relevant to the things that affect all contracting parties or all the constituencies and stakeholder groups. Is there a way that we can do that within the ICANN realm to bring back some of these types of discussions and not have it be about specific who is policies, uh, those kinds of things? Sally, would you like to, for those of you who, who, who are new, new to this, this is Sally Costerton, and, and the microphone is about to be passed to her. Hello, I'm Sally, and uh, the reason that Fadi said that is because for any of you that were at the Toronto meeting, uh, Fadi asked me um, off the stage in the middle of the Toronto meeting uh, if I would take a look at the, me the, well, the content of the meeting. So it's a very timely question, and I'm also very glad to hear what you say. I completely agree with you. This is a, a very personal comment, just at the end of my first IGF. I, I have found this to be, as Fadi said, very substantive, and it's given me a lot of ideas. So we're handling, oh, I'm leading a small review team. In, at the moment, we're staff, but it will widen to the community to start looking at how we can not change everything, but just evolve how we use the ICANN meetings. They're very powerful, um, but the, we, uh, one observation we have is that they're, they're not very topic-driven. They're quite constituency-led, so we need to find a middle ground because the constituency, people come to ICANN meetings partly to be in their constituency, so that's very important. But finding opportunities to bring people from across the constituencies together, such as industry, but not just industry, around topics that concern us all, which is how this works. So uh, thank you for that, and um, Expect to hear more from us as we as we as we formulate our recommendations a bit more and come to you for for input. And I, the other thing I would say is they can't last. We can't put another day on the end of the meeting, <laughs> just in case anyone's leaving here worried. <laughs> yes, uh, it's interesting. I I probably for the first time noticed in Toronto uh, something you may have been going on for a while, but new GTLDs and brands coming. I noticed that there were people coming who literally were coming for like two days. And leaving on Tuesday because their work was done, and, and that's a diff that's a different dynamic to the what we to what we're used to, and so we need to take account of that. Just not quite sure how. Okay, anyone else want to ask Fadi, who, so that <laughs> or someone else for that matter? Want to ask anyone want to ask Fadi another question before we move on to the next bit, which is about communications and and engagement. Nothing specifically for Fadi right now. Yes, Khalid. I think you uh, triggered my interest to speak uh, when you mentioned the word the next bit. So before we get into the detail, an interjection perhaps that may be worthwhile. Um, I was in the session that before this one, and that was the UNESCO session on multilingualism. And I, uh, and I found it exceptionally helpful. One of the key points that were discussed were how to advance multilingualism, um, especially in the new era, where you know, I, I hear you nodding, and I see you nodding, so I think that's, uh, we're on the same page. Um, and some of the discussions were also about uh, our expectation, our timeline. And then what sort of like came to my mind was, while UNESCO is doing some great things, I think there's some serious challenges um, that ICANN can do better at. And you may have already come to terms with them. I recognize you're still new on the job, and you're doing so an excellent job of learning on the job as well. But let me just summarize. The latest uh, milestone in ICANN's history is the new GTLDs. We received 1,900 plus. Out of those, in the region of 5% are IDNs. Those of us who remember the WISIS, the WISIS concluded in 2005 calling ICANN on ICANN to internationalize itself. And part of the compromise
compromise was us as well was the consultation on internet governance, which I was heavily involved in, in, in New York at the UN, and the birth of WIGIG and then IGF. So historical perspective. Adding that into perspective, the call to internationalize itself was to actually launch IDNs and to add the legi legitimacy from an international perspective to ICANN. What we ended up with is a new GTLD program that de delivered to us 1,900 applica plus applications, 95 of which, percent of which are in the ASCII characters. So in my opinion, and maybe some other people don't agree, but that's fine, that's my personal and professional op opinion, I think that was a serious letdown. That's one. I would like to hear your comment on that, whether you think it could have been a lot better or uh, how do we do to actually overcome this, this letdown. Secondly, even the decision to go with IDNs first, which in Toronto I, 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 I welcomed, I did not congratulate yet, because I see challenges with that as well. Because you look at the, 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 uh, uh, the sources of the IDN request, there are significant numbers within that, uh, those applications that are also Western companies applying for IDN stuff. So if we're really trying to serve what I've been calling for the last two, three years, the global public interest, do we not need to pay attention and reform ourselves structurally to deliver on a, 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 an internet that is truly as transparent as we can and as functional as we can, but also as fair as we can, so we don't end up into the, the mistake of what happened in the last six, seven years, that it may have been a minor degree or two in, in the direction, but instead of landing us on Mars, it landed us on the moon. That's a huge uh, landing dis discrepancy. So what I would like to ask you is, have you already come aware, have you become aware of these challenges? And to what extent do you see those as part of your strategic vision of how to actually redirect the direction to actually deliver ICANN, the legitimacy it, ne it needs, so at least you do end up serving the global public interest beyond what I would call in friendly conversations, the pain job. Thank you. Thank you, Khaled. I, I really appreciate, first of all, really uh, your, not just your passion for the subject, but your sincerity about the importance of this. And frankly, your doggedness about it. Because if people like you don't do that, we're gonna just keep going and not pay attention to these things. So I, I thank you for that on my behalf and behalf of the community. And you've been generous in your time with me uh, whenever you could and whenever I could uh, to keep me focused on that. So thank you for that. Um, so the, answer, the short answer to your question is, it would be insincere of me to say to the community, yes, we're making ICANN international uh, by opening offices in Baku and Cairo and and uh, making sure that uh, ICANN meetings are translated in uh, you know, 26 languages. That's not, in, that's not reaching out to the world. Uh, the problems uh, are deeper and more complex than you called it a paint job. Uh, so what I want to assure you of is that not only my heart is in the right place, but my mind is in the right place, and I'm gonna redirect the resources in the right place so we can actually finally solve this riddle. I'll give you an example. One of the reasons not many international domain names are working is because if you try today to set up a domain name, uh, an email address with a Cyrillic or Arabic or Chinese characters, good luck sending an email, okay? That's a fundamental problem. <laughs> you know, that's not gonna work. So I'm not sitting on the issue. You can ask my chairman. This morning we were having breakfast and I'm asking, how do we move this forward? Talk to the CTO of Cisco, Microsoft in the Middle East, for example, to ask how is the, oh, well, we, we need to figure out how to advance IETF standards. Okay, how do we get IETF standards move forward? We're on it. We're gonna be on it. Not everything is my, in my hands or ICANN's hands. In this case, it's not in ICANN's hands. But we must be leaders and find people in the community that say, how do we advance this issue? Because as we advance the issues, we solve the problems, we move forward. What is happening at ICANN now, and this is maybe not visible to many people, is a hands-on 
engagement to solve problems. This is not about shaking hands and having talks and appearing on TV. and It's not about that. ICANN is about getting the work done. That's what ICANN should be about. So when we have issues, we get together. Last week in Brussels, we had tens of people from the community sitting with me for two full days until we solved the problem in the trademark clearinghouse. That's how we get things done. Akram is doing the same right now as we speak with another side. We are a hands-on management team. We are doing the work of the community. That's what we need to be doing. Lastly, on the IDNs, it's not just an email issue and standards. I just wanted to give you the assurance that we're on top of it. As to the structural way ICANN works and whether uh, ICANN should add a new structural group that focuses on the IDNs to give it the thing, this is a subject that the community should discuss. And if it's the right way to advance our focus on IDNs, we should do that. Uh, if there's a better way or another way, let's do it. But we can't just sit on it and do nothing. It's time we, we embrace that and we do it well. And I, I tell you, the, the backside to why only 5% of the applications came from non-ASCII characters is because ICANN is not there. Go put yourself in the shoes of somebody sitting in Libya who wants to apply for this or in uh, Indonesia. Y it's not easy to, to quote unquote embrace ICANN's processes if you come from that part of the world. So this is why Tara and Sally and the engagement we're doing now to get out and go there and understand why this guy in Indonesia is having a hard time, even if he has the cash, even if he had the cash to apply for this. We need to make that easier, faster, and more accessible. And that we're going to do. Okay. Th thank you, Khalid. Thanks, Fadi. So we're going to move on and talk about participation in ICANN, unless there's any last... Not that Fadi's going anywhere. He's still going to be here. But Okay, so you've already heard from, from Sally, and she's going to talk a bit about participation in, in ICANN and how we ensure global multi-stakeholder participation. And you can have a label as well. That's okay. Thank you. There Thank we go. You, Chris. <laughs> the multitasking Mr. Dispain. Thank That's you. My pleasure. Um, well, it's very nice to see you all and, and uh, thank you so many of you for being here at the end of fairly close to the end of this conference and uh, you all look more lively like you've had more sleep than I have. So that's one thing I've learned in my first IGF. Um, I just wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about something I know most of you are very uh, keen on, very much want to hear about. Uh, go into a little bit more detail in terms of what Fadi was saying about how we want to deepen and broaden our engagement with our stakeholders. So at the top level, deepen those of you, for example, who are here, who are either already very active in our community or are looking in, as it were, from perhaps other parts of the, of the internet governance community and are intrigued to see a little more of what ICANN does. We want to work out how to deepen our relationship with you even more um, and bring you, br help you to express yourself and to, and to facilitate your ability to do your business in your countries and in your, sp in your specialist groups. So we're here, for those of you who, who know us already, which effectively is pretty much everyone, at least in this room, we're here to help you to do your business more effectively. So in that part of our, our work, we will, as well as internationalizing, which Tarek and I are very involved with, and that is very practical things. It mainly it's about, at this stage, it's about people. It's about talent. How do we make sure we have the very best people that come to work for ICANN who not only have very, very strong skills, but very importantly, they, they share the mission. This is not about hiring you know, consultants by the pound. It's about making sure we bring people into our, our staff community who share your values. And if they don't share them yet, it's because they're friends you haven't met yet, literally. This is how we see it. So we're spending probably, if I'm honest, slightly more time than we thought we would be doing at this stage on, on very classic management. You know, How do we make sure we have the right combination of skills and talent and where? Where do we want them to be based? 
The second thing on, on the broader talent agenda, that you, and they will not like me using that word, but I'm going to because I happen to think they're very talented, is how do we work more closely with our, our board? They are tremendously skilled, very well connected, and very passionate about ICANN, of course, or they wouldn't be here. And they've been extremely generous to a man and woman, to my team and, my, and myself personally, Anything we can do, we want to do to help you. And I, I, I mean that most sincerely. This is not me being flattering because some of them are sitting in here. Everyone who's been in those meetings knows that that is what we are doing together. And I know that you will be very pleased to hear that because, the, of course, the mechanism for, for those of you that don't know, the mechanism for appointing board directors in ICANN is, is from the community. So this is something very, very relevant, very direct in terms of helping us to provide you with the kinds of things that we think you need, but also engaging them in that process. And they're, they're very willing and they're very good. And, and, and I hope that you'll see them more um, doing slightly different things as time goes on. And, and, and they've been so far very, very, very supportive. Um, in terms of broadening our engagement with stakeholders, this is really about bringing new stakeholders into the ICANN, into ICANN, into our community. For the f sometimes, often it will be for the first time. Many of you will have heard Fadi talk about taking us to new places, specifically where new internet users will come from. In addition to that, we, I, I come from a communications background. I've spent most of my life in communications, and. I feel quite passionately that I want to spread the word. I want to use the skills that I have to really go to new audiences, not just in emerging when developing markets, but in America, in, the, in Europe, to people that we need to hear from, some of whom are here at IGF, on a broader range of topics, as, we, as I just said to this gentleman here, because the energy for this is phenomenal and slightly better, much better, and simpler and clearer communications. That's my word for today, clearer communications from ICANN, so that we can help those people understand us straight away. We talk to them in language that they, they talk today. Real world speak, I'm gonna call it. This is a big priority for me. How do we go through all the work we do at ICANN and make sure that as much as possible, anybody in the world can understand us and engage. So that's not just about language, although it is about language and scribing and translation. It's also about just explaining ourselves more clearly. And to that note, very briefly, I'm just going to stand up so the mic is going to go for a second. But I will show you that if you, if you haven't seen these, and hopefully all of you have seen them, and they're on our booth in the lobby. Matt's nodding. This is Matt here with the blue and check shirt on waving. You can find him either here or in the lobby, and he can give you these. We have been working on just some very simple pictures. You would call them even doodles. They're now quite smart doodles, but they're still basically doodles. But they're designed to help us with storytelling. Clear communications is about storytelling. I want, I want us to engage in something that means something to both of us. And if you don't understand what I'm trying to tell you, it is not communications. It is a monologue. And these are just two doodles. One is about, is this, actually I'll stay sitting, then I'll stay with the mic, that's a good idea. Um, this is about how the internet works. Who runs the internet? And uh, this is designed to go, if you go on Google and you type in, who runs the internet? This will come up. It's for my mum. She's 76. She wants to buy an iPad for the first time. She is somebody who may well have a view about what kind of content she wants to have access to. She has no idea that whether she has access to content or not has to do with things like regulation. Why would she have that? She also has no idea where to go and find that information. So this is a sign that to start a dialogue, to start a dialogue with people who probably don't know us yet, very high level. The second one is in a slightly earlier phase, as you can see, for anybody that can see this. This is what the designers apparently call a napkin. As an English woman, I always thought that was something you had on your lap at mealtimes, but anyway, this is a napkin. And um, this is how ICANN works. Now, you know, I would love to be able to say it is easy or possible 
<laughs> to make this one quite as simple as this one, that is not going to happen. But still, you will see one thing on this table that you don't see in other ICANN drawings sometimes, which is people. Actual people, like the people that are in this room. IGF is about dialogue. It's about building relationships, mu not about making decisions, not about building policy. And I've been very struck in my first three months, and especially here, about how this extraordinarily mechanical thing, digital thing that we call the internet, is really supported by people, by relationships. And trying to find a way to express that in a meaningful way that will empower people and encourage them, this is also part of this exercise. If you haven't already done this and you would like to, you can go on to a new platform that we have created, which is our working platform for anybody, anybody that wants to become part of our ICANN community. And it is called My ICANN. And if you haven't been up, please go, please register. It is very easy to register. <laughs> and it's on myican.org. And that on there, on the front page, you will find a little box called Help us picture our world. And this is where you can click through and leave any comments. So if you look at this and go, as somebody did to me the other day, there is no D. <laughs> Come and tell us there's no D. And these will be hopefully ready and used in the in and you'll see them, you know, we'll use them on the web, we'll encourage you to use them. They're social tools, we'd love them to go viral. Do what you like with them. In the next kind of month to six weeks, certainly by January, I think they'll both be in, in kind of proper circulation. But do do tell us what you think. Um, the final thing I just wanted to talk about was capacity building. Because I need to make sure I say that at every meeting. Actually, I haven't said multi-stakeholder yet. No. Um, I did. I've already said that. Thank you, Erica. Um, capacity building is on my, on my watch and on Tarek's watch, but particularly on mine. And I've already had some superb exchanges with my colleagues in, um, or my friends in the uh, ALAC community, which has been fantastic and very, very helpful. And we're now getting from the stage of saying, how can we help, which I spent about the first six weeks saying, to, OK, now we have to start work. And each of you want capacity building in a different way. You know, this I've already worked out. So for some, yesterday, somebody was talking to me about recruitment recruitment of um, new NGOs, not NGOs, new not-for-profits. Um, other people want content. Give us, give us um, guides, which you find on the booth, helping, us to, uh, helping people to understand our world and our community. Other people want feet on the ground, meetings, speakers. Other people want slides, decks, this kind of thing. So over the next few weeks and months, we will be talking with you a lot and listening. Engagement is about listening as well as asserting. And we're mainly listening at the moment because we're new and because we need to do more listening. But we will also start us doing things. And, and it, we're now already starting into mo moving into that phase with our Africa strategy uh, and next with our uh, Latin American Caribbean strategy. And you'll start seeing us much more active in terms of supplying content. So my final words, I would say, firstly, thank you for um, helping me anyway to understand your world. And thank you very much for everything you've advised us so far. And please keep talking to us. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Um, how many people in the room have been to look at my ICANN? Uh, and how many people? And how many people have actually registered for my ICANN? Well, it's pretty much everybody that went to have a look at it. So who wants to ask, who wants to say something about my ICANN? It doesn't have to be, but, but, Cheryl. Matt, Matt is coming with the mic. Hi, my name's Cheryl Langdon. And once upon the time, I had the honor and the privilege of being the chair of the at-large advisory committee, which is that ALAC word that Sally was, Sally was using earlier. Um, and the ALAC is 15 people who bring from the edges, the millions and billions that are out there, via a bunch of organizations, which are called at-large structures, into what we call the at-large community. And that's where, where Sally's focusing so much of what she's saying. And that's very much what my ICANN is about, but not just those of us who've already drunk the Kool-Aid, <laughs> and we have. 
It's to take it to the next level. It's an empowering tool as far as I'm concerned. And I want to give huge kudos to, to that. I mean, that, it's a, an excellent platform. We need to tweak it in a little way or two, which we know about. Um, but what I found is not just the ability to click on and, and contribute, is, as, as you've described it, but it is one of the few times, and I, I'd call myself fairly savvy about ICANN and what it's ever said or done. I have trouble finding stuff until my ICANN's coming along. My ICANN is going to make my life easier and it's going to make your life easier to engage with ICANN. It is an access tool which uses pull technology and presents to you what you want to know about. Someone come to the booth and say to me, tell me about who is, I signed them up to my ICANN. It was a much easier conversation. So thank you. Thank you for communicating in a closed loop, which is a nice thing. <laughs> And everyone should be getting three other people they know to log on and register to my ICANN. You make it, thank you, Cheryl. You make it sound like a pyramid selling scheme, but I'm, it's. Um, anyone else want to talk about? Uh, you know, this doesn't have to be my ICANN. Communication generally, languages. Any comments or questions for Sally? Or, yeah. Ah, there's a lady at the back. Matt is the. Keep your keep your hand up. Keep your hand. That's great. Matt's on his way. Yep, it's working. Hello, uh, my name is Irina, and I work uh, for dot ru CCTLD registry, and we run uh, the biggest uh, IDN CCTLD IDN. And I'm also involved in uh, the new GTLD stuff. We have applied for IDN as well. So I'm extremely happy to hear uh, about your negotiations uh, with uh, Microsoft. I'm also happy to hear about the progress made uh, in the trademark clearing house model. But my question is, um, my concern actually is uh, that I doubt that uh, many trademark uh, holders in my country have ever heard about this brilliant instrument and uh, I wonder uh, if, if I can has any uh, communication uh, plan to make uh, trademark holders aware of their trademark clearing house instrument and to educate them how to use it and how to get registered and uh, if uh, there is any plan of global campaign, then uh, do you consider any um, potential partnership at the local level with the applicants, which might, might actually increase the um, result and the outcomes of these communications? Thank you. Thanks, Serena. Buddy? Um, thank you so much. By the way, it heartens me to congratulate you. All of us should congratulate you for the great success in Russia with the IDNs. Uh, you are at 800,000 uh, domain names in Cyrillic in Russia. And I promised uh, your people when they visited me that when you get to one million, I want to be there for the party in Moscow. This is very impressive what you've done. So thank you for that. Um, now, uh, your question is spot on. Uh, there is no use for us to build a massive trademark clearinghouse. What the lady is talking about is one of the issues with creating all these new domain uh, TLDs, top-level domains, is how do you protect trademarks? Because now it's not only .com or .org or uh, the CCs. It's uh, hundreds, potentially thousands of new TLDs, top-level domains. And uh, say you are... I don't know, IBM, you're a big brand. Well, you want to protect IBM in as many places as possible. So you own IBM dot green, IBM, whatever. Or if you're a smaller company, you may want to do the same. Or if you're an international organization, like, I don't know, the, uh, the, uh, the United Nations may want to protect. So there are issues of protecting names of all kinds. And I can commit it with community input to create a trademark clearinghouse. What the lady's asking is, do we plan to just build it and people shall find it? The answer is no. We will engage and work with the applicants and even other partners 
to make sure, because being stewards of the public interest means we do something about it. And we must go out and let people know that they can protect their trademarks, and there is a mechanism and a process to do that. Now, I will just add one thing. One of the decisions we made even last week only about this, just to show you how much we're focused on what you asked, uh, which, uh, frankly, I haven't disclosed that decision yet, so this is the first time I talk about it. But Akram and I were redesigning uh, from an implementation standpoint how the trademark clearinghouse will work. And we redesigned it with the community to ensure that the front end where a trademark holder can enter um, uh, their trademark into the clearinghouse and protect themselves, the front end is as diversified as possible and that eventually there will be competition even by various companies to promote the front end and get more people to register their trademark. So we're even engaging the community to ensure that the word is out. So we'll have ICANN work to get out there, but we'll also ensure the model by which we do the clearinghouse does not end up having a monolithic single company that has, let's say, exclusivity and therefore no space for competition and reach and outreach and improvement uh, of the service. So just as a, as a comment on that. But thank you. This is an excellent question you asked. Thank you, Ferdi. I've got a gentleman down here, Matt, who would like to ask a question. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, Dmitry Kochmanuk, uh, Ukraine Postmaster. Well, uh, I want to bring attention of Fadi and I guess everybody else in this room to another thing. Uh, as a newly elected member of ASO community, I'm deeply worried about the thing that is, well, the internet is made of, its addresses. As everybody is getting excited about the new domains, you should not to forget about the IP address exhaustion. It's a bit like global warming. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. It's a question are people prepared or not? Jeff Houston said yesterday that maybe we should have something like the digital to, well, analog to digital TV conversion. When there's a cutoff date and the government's mandated, he called for regulation. I'm not sure about government regulation be the driver for IPv6 adoption, but I'm sure you do have a way to reach to companies, and you mentioned that before. So, Fadi, what are your steps you think you can engage the industry and maybe the governments to really do IPv6 as number one? priority versus the other thing we can do after we do all of those other things. Thank you. Maybe we need some cartoons like Sally brought in, you know, pictures help. Thank S you. Steve, would you like to respond to that? Thank you, Dimitri. Um, let me uh, uh, make a small detour before uh, answering your question. Recognize both you and uh, Irina. Uh, the, the, uh, dot UA and dot uh, SU, or RU, I guess, have uh, implemented DNSSEC, which I uh, am strongly supportive of, spent a lot of my time on. And uh, so I want to I recognize you both for uh, progressive leadership in the uh, CCTLD space. This is, this is a, a major step forward. Um, so on the IPv4 uh, exhaustion and IPv6 uh, uptake, um, we uh, several things to say about it. Uh, we have, ICANN has, a relatively a modest role uh, in terms of our actual uh, um, uh, authority or uh, official role. We serve the address community and provide the top level of the allocation process. Uh, we don't have any uh, actual control over what enterprises do, over what ISPs do, and so forth, and what the vendors do. But that's, um, that said, we obviously can take some steps to uh, uh, try to help lead, uh, raise the visibility, uh, engage people in discussion of this. And, and we have to some extent. Um, I started this session by mentioning that we exist within an uh, ecosystem of others uh, who are extremely important in uh, the um, internet governance space. And <coughs> excuse me, in particular, the Internet Society has been uh, very active with respect to IPv6 adoption. Uh, last year was the uh, IPv6 World Day in June, and then this year, a year later, 
Um, so that was a kind of one-time event. I, I encouraged everybody to, uh, to, to try it out, turn on the services. This year in June as well, uh, an IBV6 launch day uh, in which they encouraged companies and, and enterprises in general to turn on IPv6 and leave it on. So that's been part of a, uh, a very substantial launch. Now, uh, you asked about address exhaustion, which is IPv4, and I'm talking about IPv6. What's the relationship with that? Well, quite obviously, the long-term answer, hopefully uh, with better outcome than the global warming uh, question, is a transition over to IPv6. It's not going to be a quick transition. We're talking about something that will be measured in hopefully a small number of decades, uh, but decades, I think, is nonetheless the, the unit of measure. So what we have is a, a pool of IPv4 addresses which have been allocated and are basically uh, mostly allocated now, and there's going to be some back and forth secondary markets and so forth. And then an IPv6 address space is just going to keep going up and up and up. But the IPv4 address space is not going to go away. Those systems are not going to be shut off all at once. Sometime down the line, when there's enough IPv6 service and when uh, there are, um, when you can reach most of the things that you do want to reach over IPv6 and people are doing that, there'll probably be a relatively uh, quick tail off to uh, in IPv4, but we're looking farther ahead uh, in that. Um, so that's the, the general picture. And then within all of that, uh, and maybe this gets to be a more detailed than you wanted, but I, I think it's important to understand. There are some key drivers for all of this. Um, uh, people who provide content, uh, are they providing it over both IPv4 and IPv6? That's very important because that's a prerequisite for other people to be able to use IPv6 to get to that content. And when I say content, we're talking about uh, Amazon, uh, for, for example, but we're also talking about every DNS server. We're talking about every uh, news service. We're talking about um, you know, major platforms like Facebook and Google and so forth. The other thing, of course, is that the transport, the ISPs, have to be running uh, IPv6. And uh, I think we're not quite at the time when you can get from one place in the world to every other place in the world over IPv6 native transports. So those are two markers that you can watch over a period of time. As those markers increase to full availability, the pressure on the IPv4 space will go, will go down. So that's really the strategic view. Uh, and that, I think, is the important uh, uh, direction to go. Thank you, Steve. Paddy? I think, Dimitri, also at the next uh, ICANN meeting or IGF meeting, we can put Nespresso machines in each room. And no pods, no coffee pods. If people certify they implemented DNSSEC, we give them coffee pods. I think that will get people moving in the right direction. Maybe we can cooperate to get that done. If we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Fadi? Yes. So I, I'm going to, if I may, I'm just going to break the flow slightly. I know that Keller wants to say something, but um, we talked about. Sally talked about the board and directors and how they come from the community and so on. And Adam Peake is here and he's on the nominating committee for this year, which has just opened up today. So I thought we might let him say a few words about, uh, about board members. Adam. Yes, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Adam Peake. I'm a member of one of these many committees of ICANN. It's the nominating committee. And if you looked at the website today, ICANN's website, you'll have seen an announcement saying that we are beginning recruitment of candidates for leadership within ICANN. It's the leadership within the board. Over a three-year period, uh, the nominating committee selects 50% um, of the board. That's eight board members. There are quite a lot of them here. Erica is one. Steve is another. George Sadowski is another. They're extremely high-quality people. And what we need uh, from the community, from all of you, is to find more of them, volunteers who are willing to go through a long and exhausting process, but one we're very grateful for of trying to volunteer for ICANN and taking on these leadership positions. We don't just select for the board. This year, we'll be selecting three board of directors, so that's three positions. We also select for the policy development positions. That's in generic names, in country code, top-level domain names, and also the user group, the at-large. Um, these are regional positions. We need more women in ICANN, so 
I will step down in a second, and I could pass over to a fellow member, Cheryl Langdenor, who is also a member of the nominating committee. Uh, we need regional diversity. Most of all, we just need very, very good people. So I hope you will consider applying. Um, if you want to apply, you could go to the nominating committee website, which is very simple. It's nomcom, N-O-M-C-O-M dot ICANN dot org, and that's where you'll find a lot of information. If you wanted to apply, you do a slash at the end of that little address and put apply, and you'll be taken to an application form. If you want to suggest somebody, and that's a really nice thing to do to people, I think you do invite friends to volunteer for ICANN. Um, you could do nomcom.icann.org slash suggest, and you'll go to a form that helps you provide the name and information about people we will reach out to and try to persuade to join this organization as volunteers. So thank you very much. Please have a look at the website. Please help us find the best people to help ICANN. Thanks. Thanks, Adam. No, I know you've got to run. Thank you. So I've got, sir, I've got, Kelly wants to say something first, and then I'll go to you, sir, if that's all right. And then I'm going to move on to the next part. We're going to get Tarek to, to talk about some things. Kelly? Uh, thank you. Just a quick note uh, addressing the um, uh, trademark issue and the clearinghouse, which I think is, is vital to the process. Um, uh, I couldn't help myself. I think Irina uh, uh, asked uh, uh, related to a question pertaining to, China, to, to, to Russia. And there's a minute detail that I think we need to keep our eyes open on when it comes to the clearinghouse in, in, in the way that the implementation at local level needs to be congruent with local laws. And um, uh, from our knowledge about uh, different um, uh, emerging markets, and Russia is one of them, we found out that there may be a question mark in the way that the clearinghouse would be implement, uh, applied or implemented if a local internet service provider or a local internet company in Russia was to use it because, I think, correct me, Irina, the local laws in, in, in Russia, um, uh, there's a law that you cannot charge a service for a service that is available for free. So. What I think we need to be in more detail is, and this is a, 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 a sort of like a, a highlight to be aware of that it's clear, and use it perhaps as a, a detail to make sure that in the implementation, the impl uh, in the implementation, the um, local laws are recognized so that we do not put uh, local operators in particular jeopardy uh, where they are uh, in uh, non-compliant with their local laws. Thanks, so something Khaled. to keep it aware of. Okay, thank you. Thank you. For the gentleman who wanted to speak at the back, put his hand up, please. And then there's a gentleman here. So could, could you stand up, please, sir? Please go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Tom Chizito, coming from Uganda, and I'm here as a Diplo Fellow. Uh, to the panel, I would like to ask, uh, particularly ICANN, as it's trying to develop a uh, uh, market IDNs and uh, try to internalize in inter internationalize uh, the internet. Uh, I made a small observation that uh, in this building, we are having only English language posters and directions, and I wonder whether we are still on the same motive. And uh, the other thing, uh, I was wondering how I can can help small countries in managing their CCTLDs, because uh, in some situations we've had conflict where private companies have been managing the country TLD, TLDs, yet uh, at a particular level, government would want to take over management, and uh, there have been a, a conflict in uh, discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sally, would you just like to, to deal with the sign question, and then I'll take the CC. E Excellent point, and I'll take the point about the signs back to my review committee on the ICANN meetings. Thank you for pointing it out. Thank you. And, and to your question on uh, on the CCTLD management, uh, until I w went onto the ICANN, I was the chairman of the CCNSO, so I can tell you what you need to do, which is you need to go and find uh, one of the CCNSO councillors. Uh, there are many of them here, and I can... Uh, point you to some of them after this, and talk to them uh, directly about what the problem is, and they will provide you with guidance. This gentleman here would like uh, to make a comment, and then I'm going to go back to, is that you, Mary? Hello, Mary. This gentleman here. Go ahead, sir. Uh, 
Hi, uh, my name is uh, Omar Ansari and I'm uh, from uh, uh, the National ICT Alliance of uh, Afghanistan. Uh, my country is uh, pretty much underrepresented uh, when it comes to the technology platform. This is an issue that I'm working on to address, uh, talking to various international platforms so that we could get engaged um, uh, with the international uh, platforms. Um, and one other very major issue in Afghanistan, uh, specifically with the internet, is, is the lack of awareness, uh, education, and understanding. And then uh, when it comes to ICON, very limited people know what ICON is and what it can do and what it does, you know. Uh, my question is uh, how uh, um, uh, Afghanistan, uh, what are your programs to which we could Okay, um, uh, what are the programs that we could uh, 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 work together uh, in collaboration with, uh, with ICON to develop this understanding and create awareness about not only ICANN, but uh, the internet itself, that's one thing. And the other question is how we could get engaged uh, with ICANN. What are your specific programs for countries like Afghanistan? They're post-conflict, uh, underrepresented uh, in, in underdeveloped countries. Uh, thank you. Do you want Sally? Do you have thank you. It's an excellent question, and I think probably there are uh, many countries who 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 are having similar issues or who might have similar issues. Um, the answer to the first question, or the bigger question, how can we work together to help? The answer to that is, I mean, this is exactly why we are here, to hear these kinds of requests. So what I would ask you to do is to email me with your details, and we will find the right person inside my team who will talk to you and your community. It, so it may be a small community, <laughs> maybe just for you, but we certainly want to talk to you because this is something, there are a range of different activities that we would want you to be able to participate in and we will also talk to you about how we can help join you up, connect the dots with some of the other, like ISOC, IETF, the other organizations that we can tr point you towards so that there will be, there were, I mean, I don't know exactly how much there is on the ground, but I know it's more than just ICANN can offer. So that's that. In terms of the, oh, and Fadi's going to answer so the other on bit. On <laughs> Mr. Ansari, on your second question, which is very important, uh, first of all, I must tell you, I was very heartened by your minister's comment at the ministerial meeting. I mean, really superb comment, very um, uh, heartfelt, but also very detailed. Uh, he made us all feel like we want to jump and go help him in Afghanistan uh, because of his sincerity. So uh, thanks for that and for, for what you bring to the table. Uh, not just uh, your country, but other countries and other countries with also multiple stakeholders, not just governments, have now approached us saying, we need a roadmap to figure out how to work with ICANN. ICANN has a board. You just heard Adam invite you to nominate people to the board. It has uh, staff where you could also help us. It has multiple supporting organizations. It has multiple advisory committees. And it, so there's a br broad set of things. But it's one thing to tell you, yep, here's the graph you know, uh, that Sally showed. This is all who we are. Figure it out. It's another thing to build a roadmap that can tell you, look, these are the decisions made at ICANN. This is how we make them. This is why they're made, where they're made. This is the kind of people you can bring to the table. They would be helpful for these decisions. That's how they can participate. So we're putting together just what I told you now. I asked Sally to do this because many countries big countries even asked us, show us this roadmap. And this is important because when we talk about internationalization, it's one thing to hand you a brochure. It's another thing to proactively give you the map so you can participate at the right level, affecting the right decisions in the right places. So we're going to come back to you with that. To not just to Afghanistan, but to all the countries that approached yeah. us. And as just for an intensely practical suggestion, the ICANN also has an incredibly successful fellowship program, and you can apply to 
to come and learn about ICANN by actually being at an ICANN meeting, by being part of the fellowship program. So that's worth remembering as well. Uh, we get, yep, one second, Mary. Did you want to say something? Matt, could you, Mary, can you stand up, please? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to say, Sally, um, I hear you loud and clear. You have um, a strategy to get to us because that had been our yearning that I can should come to us. And um, I don't know whether you have uh, drawn up your strategy. And one of the things I want to suggest is that you may not be able to get to all the, all the um, areas, countries, remote areas, but I would, I would like to see champions, ICANN champions build for each region, each uh, continent, or even in country that can carry on the communication to our people to know that there is business in domain name business. Um, we, we have to bring them on. Inclusiveness is very, very key to us. So um, when we ask for ICANN to be present in whatever thing we are doing, for instance, uh, ICANN should look around, see those champions, whether within the country or within re region, to go and actually communicate ICANN to the people that will make up ICANN. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. And last comment before we move on. The gentleman at the back there, sir. Hi, um, uh, my name is Xian Zhang from CNIC, China. I have a question for uh, Sally. So um, in the past uh, several days, um, I heard a lot of people from developing countries, they uh, do have some comments about how there, there is a barrier for people from developing countries to access the internet and also to get involved in ICANN and also, of course, and the, the new GTLD in terms of the um, barrier, language barrier, for example, and the finance and, and policy uh, stuff. So my, my question is, um, do you have any developing country focused communica uh, communication plan um, carry on in future? And as you all know, we are hosting the next ICANN meeting. And China, well, we, we, we have the biggest, we, we, uh, we are the one of the biggest developing country. So hosting a, su a successful ICANN meeting prob probably is not only a meeting, but also a symbolic demonstration of the new season for developing countries. So my second question is, um, do you have any developing country focused specific program or plan in the Beijing meeting? Thank you. Um, so thank you for your comments. Uh, I like the idea of presenting the Beijing meeting as a new season. Um, oh, the answer is uh, to the first one is yes. We have um, a s an increasing regional um, and sub-regional, it depends on how you define regions, but uh, uh, in Asia Pacific, in Latin America, uh, and in Africa, um, we have s we have a we're building our capacity. We're build we're building our capacity in the staff sense, um, particularly with engagement and communications people, which I referred to at the start of my comments. We are in fact meeting this team for the first time in one together um, next week. Oh no, the week after next to um, complete our stakeholder engagement plan, which will include outreach plans for as many of the key geographies as we feel we, we can deal with in the first, say, you know, six months, nine months of 2013. Because you're right, Mary, you said we need to pace ourselves. We must not overpromise. We must be clear about what we can do and where we need people to help. And the second to the second point, yes, Beijing is very much on my mind. Um, I think it is a perfect opportunity to bring many of these strands together. It's April. We have a little time, although I've scared. It seems less time than I thought, actually. Um, we're working very closely with Scenic, with your, with your um, colleagues, um, but also with other, other people in the Chinese uh, community, internet community, to help us, not just to run a good meeting, but to help us to use that as a platform for, all, for everyone to try to engage as deeply as we can with, with local um, groups, um, with the universities, with, with uh, science parks, with other types of, of groups who may not visit our meeting, but we use that as an opportunity to really extend our communications. 
So there are people responsible and there will be more. Uh, we have an aggressive recruitment plan, particularly in Asia, over the next si five to six months. Um, and we will certainly use the Beijing meeting as a, as a, as a platform, a, a high profile platform. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, I'm very glad you're, uh, you're as enthusiastic about it as, as we are. Thank you, Sally. Ali, did you want to and to Mary, I just want to say we're uh, about to announce some important additions to our team. Uh, and amongst these will be a new vice president for Africa. So this will be announced also shortly. We've been behind on that, and it's about time we do it. So there will be announcements very soon. But we're moving forward with the expansion, uh, and also not just at that level, but of going down uh, and, and making sure we touch, we get closer to the people who really need to hear about the message. I like your idea of champions. We had discussed it under a different label, but this is a very good idea. Young people young people who are yearning to participate in this uh, important enterprise. So thank you for that. Thank you, Fadi. As is often the case with, with ICANN stuff, one subject bleeds into another subject. And now we're going to move on and, and hear from Tarek about internationalization objectives and, and regional strategies, which is basically what we've been talking about for the last five or ten minutes anyway. And hang on a second, Tarek. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to be brief because we don't have, uh, obviously, that much time. And as Fadi and uh, uh, Sally have mentioned, internationalization is part of our strategic and uh, objectives and goals. And we are putting a lot of emphasis within our plan on internationalization with a, a special focus. Uh, we started with Africa, but also Latin America and other parts of the world. And when we talk about internationalization, uh, it is with a very uh, strategic objective, simply inclusion and inclusion within the ICANN constituencies, inclusion within the ICANN processes, and uh, in inclusion uh, within the ICANN uh, meetings. And uh, this will provide ICANN uh, definitely with more, uh, uh, a better brand, but also more legitimacy world, uh, worldwide. And uh, we have been uh, putting a plan together with Sally that has not been yet finalized, but it will be announced towards the beginning of the year with our regional vice presidents about our engagement plan, global engagement plan in various parts of uh, the world. We are doing this plan not alone, but we are doing it uh, very closely with our constituencies. And we have started with Africa. Uh, Fadi has uh, asked us in Prague, in our meeting in Prague, even before he took over his, uh, his office to build an African working group and to develop a strategy for Africa. This has happened and has been announced in uh, Toronto, uh, the initial plan of the African strategy in Toronto of weeks ago. How did we do that? Not the ICANN staff. ICANN has been only a catalyst to develop the Africa strategy, but we had the Afralo uh, Benjoma was uh, Tijani Benjoma was with us, and we had the African TLDs, and uh, we have been hosted by the AFRINIC within the development of uh, the African strategy. So we are working very closely, closely with the ISTARs. We're working very closely with our with the RIRs when we are talking about our plan and about our internationalization. We are not doing uh, uh, this alone in uh, isolation from our uh, uh, allies and our friends and our partners that have been working uh, together with ICANN within the last uh, 20 years. Latin America is taking a, a similar initiative started in Toronto. Uh, our Vice President Rodrigo is leading this effort now in Latin uh, America uh, with a similar approach as well. And we hope that uh, by Beijing we would have also uh, something more concrete to be uh, announced. Uh, just today, we have been approached by our Asian friends, uh, uh, asking us also for a similar uh, for a similar engagement. And I believe that we will find definitely a more deeper engagement for Asian friends in uh, within our engagement plan. And when we talk about an um, an engagement plan and about uh, a, a strategy, it is very clear with two objectives to strengthen ICANN presence in Africa, in Latin America, and in the developing countries, as it has been requested several times, but as well to widen the participation within ICANN constituencies, within the GAC, for example, uh, uh, as such. We want more participation from the developing world in the GAC. We want their voices heard. And we have with us the GAC chair, Heather Dryden, uh, 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 today here in this room with us. So we're working closely with her in order to empower the GAC and to bring more participation in the GAC. And when we look at the statistics worldwide, the developing world, Africa, and even the Arab world as well, have been recently discussing that within the Arab IGF, 
is doing very well when it comes to mobile penetration. We are very close to the international averages. And even in internet basic connectivity, it's not bad. It is also getting close to uh, a global and international averages of mobile connectivity compared to the population of Africa and the Arab world as an example. But, but when it comes to the number of TLDs that are registered whether under, uh, and domains that are registered under top level domains, whether CCTLDs or GTLDs, then we start to realize that we are lacking behind. This is a clear diagnosis that we have an issue, an issue that we, want to be, that we have to be working on, which is developing the industry in our part of the world in order to ensure that we are included and we are part uh, of the global industry that is evolving. We want to, fit to see African and developing countries and Latin American and Asian registrars, accredited registrars within the GNSO in order to have the voices of this part of the world really heard. This is not happening at uh, the time being, and therefore, uh, this part, these parts of the world feel marginalized and feel that the ICANN is American-centric and European-centric, which is uh, uh, generally uh, not true. But there is work to be done, and a lot of work to be done. In order to achieve that, we need definitely champions in, uh, uh, in the region, whatever ICANN champions, whatever we call them, to be partnering with us, young entrepreneurs that are motivated and ready, really, to become part of the global uh, of the global ICANN community, we work in a bottom-up process. Uh, uh, used uh, used to do, and it has to be inclusive as much as we can. We are not going to be able to please everybody, but still we have to listen to everybody, and the process should be inclusive as much as we can. So we welcome you, uh, 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 your participation in our engagement plan, in our regional engagement plan on a government as well as on a regional basis. One last thing. We also have a plan for the IGO. And uh, for the first time, we have hired also uh, a colleague. Uh, she's with us, Nora Abusita. She's sitting here in, uh, in the middle. She's uh, from the UAE and uh, based at the headquarters. She will be overlooking our uh, strategy for the IGOs. And just a couple of examples for, of some activities that has been there over the last couple of months, but maybe not rightly promoted. We are engaging with the IGF. And as Fadi has mentioned, he, has a wonder, he had a wonderful meeting with the Undersecretary uh, uh, of DESA. And uh, we have a plan to engage more and more uh, with the IGF and to empower the IGF uh, more and more. We have two members from ICANN that are already within the MAC committee of the IGF, Bahra Ismat, our Vice President for uh, the Middle East, and our moderator, uh, Chris Despain, who is a board member. So, we are engaged with the MAC of the IGF and we will deepen our engagement. Also, Nigel Hickson, our Vice President for Europe, is a member of the ITAC in the OECD for the first time and is a member of the informal committee of experts that is preparing for the World Telecommunication Policy Forum of the ITU next May. So we also engage with the ITU within the preparation of the WTO. Uh, uh, distancing ourselves from the dialogue, we are there, the, uh, 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 the dialogue. Uh, our dear friend Fatal has mentioned uh, the, the UNESCO. So we are engaged with UNESCO and with their IDN readiness. Uh, 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 they have recent uh, uh, been right. are looking at it uh, seriously from a technical point of view, but as well from an organizational, from an, organ on an organizational point of view. So this is our messages. We are already engaged with the IGO. Fadi wants us to in deepen the engagement with the IGO. We're preparing a plan for that, and we'll definitely announce it and share it with the, with the global community to have your feedback as usual. Thank you very much. Th thank you, Tarek. Um, Erica, did you want to say a few words as well? This is uh, Erica Manis, an another one of our board members. Erica? Sir, sorry, sir. That's okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, let let me be very brief um, because I think uh, Fadi said uh, already mentioned most of the point. I think we have to stay a little bit realistic when we talk about internationalization. It's a term which is extremely attractive, um, particularly in the internet environment, and everybody thinks it's easy uh, workable. I think it's one of the most complicated term. So we have to make it uh, reliable and practical and really understand what it means for the ICANN environment. 
because when we talk about ICANN, it's a particular segment of the uh, overall internet architecture. And so what I would recommend that we stay uh, extremely um, pragmatic and realistic. Uh, we need to look at it, and it was mentioned, I'm just knowing, not going into the intellectual discussion, but just let me mention all the various levels we have to look at. So, um, Sally already mentioned the team level. Uh, we started years ago to nationalize our team, and this means that the team in uh, Los Angeles and the teams which work in our national offices are international teams. So, they don't, do not represent um, a national pe perspective only but they reflect um, the goals of ICANN, which is per se an international community, but at the same time, of course, they must reflect to some degree uh, national concerns, uh, because if they're based, for example, in, in the European Union, in Brussels, or if they're based in Washington, of course, they reflect to some degree uh, national uh, relationship and partnerships as well. Um, we are looking into um, uh, enhancing uh, and building more offices, um, uh, in different regions of the world. We already have some offices, as you know, and we have uh, many uh, players already um, and actors which are part of, um, of ICANN. Uh, for example, our vice presidents, they ha do have an, uh, an international role, but they have, of course, a regional um, role as well to play with regard to their uh, respective countries or their respective regions. Um, what we have to do, we have to define this probably much better than we have done it in the past. So these things developed and evolved out of need quite often. And uh, as Fadi and Sally and Tariq are now saying, and the board uh, is supporting this completely and fully, we need to have a more operational and strategic plan about what we want to achieve, what ICANN is uh, about in the system of the uh, global internet architecture. Uh, we all know this, but we haven't really always defined it. There are bits and pieces, but we probably have to review it. And then, of course, we need to review where do we have to be, uh, uh, with regard to our office, what kind of regional level, where we have to open these kind of offices. So we are in the middle of the discussion and we all want to invite you uh, actually to understand better what you think about it so that the board can take a really uh, you know, well-grounded decision. Um, the same is true, of course, for, for the GAC, the government advisory body. Heather is here. Uh, again, the government advisory body is per se international. Um, um, uh, that's the role. Uh, but of course, uh, the, the government advisory body uh, reflects national positions as well within an international core. Um, and we, we need to uh, discuss and talk about it, what kind of role um, the advi uh, government advisory body will have to play even, in, in, um, even probably more in the future. There are challenges uh, coming uh, out of the new GTLD environment which reflect uh, to some degree, um, uh, how we see and how we observe what we call internationalization. Then it's our multi-stakeholder um, uh, definition which we use. Again, it's per se an international environment. All the different multi-stakeholder uh, communities, are, um, all of you are operating on, a, on an international and global scale. Uh, and there are challenges arising from it because many of you, like, like Erkin as a whole, must reflect different interests. So um, we will have to look at this and uh, at it again. And then finally, maybe uh, a term which I'm personally struggling with because we use it all the time, uh, which relates to our work, which is the called the global public interest. Sometimes we just say public interest. Now it's very hard when you look for a, a, a definition. Yes, we have an, uh, a, an understanding what we want to achieve, uh, how we have to serve the global public interest. But it's sometimes, uh, or maybe there's a time where we need to understand probably a little bit better what it means uh, in this very particular um, environment we have to serve. Um, so again, it relates to our international role, but it relates back to the different roles which we play at the same time, either on a local or national level. More, uh, a greater understanding is needed, uh, and let me assure you, um, uh, Fadi and, and the whole team is working hard on it. And the same is true for, for the board, Steve. Um, and, and Chris um, actually um, um, was one of the, uh, quite recently came out uh, with some recommendation and we had discussions about it in our, um, and on the board and Gonzalo, who is responsible for this group, um, certainly will pick up the discussion we are having here. So we are looking forward to have an open discussion with you. When you have ideas, just send them to us and uh, we will uh, look at them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Erica. Um, 
I want to give the closing words to, to Fatty and Steve. I can probably take one Cheryl. I can take one Cheryl. <laughs> there is only one, one Cheryl, Cheryl, Chris, yes. it's all right. Um, I just want to very briefly follow on uh, from what Adam, who didn't have much time with you, said, and he left a whole lot of really important information in all your minds about how you may uh, perhaps apply for one of the leadership positions within ICANN, uh, but also how you could recommend others. I have with me a whole bunch of very simple communication. They're um, business cards, and it's got all that information on both sides. One says, please apply, the other says, recommend someone. I've got a box of them. There is a stack of them with Matt at the booth. Uh, um, Mary, you're not getting away without 100. OK, is that clear? Um, take some and pass them on to people you believe are the type of people, think about independent director type people, to consider to be part of the puddle of people we get to select from. This is not a straightforward process. It's a long process, and it doesn't close until the 1st of May next year. Thank you for indulging me, Chris. It's a pleasure, Cheryl. So, um, Fatty, would you like to say a few words to finish off, and then Steve, sure. and then we can um, go home. Just quickly, uh, first to Asia, all the people here from Asia. We have a great leader uh, in the staff for our Asian work. Zhadong Li is here, so you all see him. Zhadong is our leader for that region. Uh, he's our vice president and has a, a lot of experience and a lot of planning happening right now for how he takes ICANN to that part of the world. I'm counting on him. All of us are counting on our team to make that happen. So. Uh, that's important. But truly to the people from Asia here, I know we went uh, east from uh, Los Angeles first to get to Africa and then we are now heading south to Latin America uh, and I hope you'll forgive us for doing this third, but we are next heading west of Los Angeles to Asia. So we're going to get to you and we're going to cover uh, as fast as we can uh, the needs that Asia has brought to us and I already spoke to some of you and we'll be doing things as early as this month to really reach out to the community in Asia. So thank you for waiting for us as we went in a couple of directions before getting to you. Um, I want to recognize uh, the board members who are with us today because frankly uh, they are the quiet people who in the background make a lot of this work uh, and our board members are very very committed to ICANN. So Bill Graham, who's here in the first row, uh, and I go down here, there's of course Erika Mann, whom you've all just heard now. We have Heather Dryden, who's not just a board member, she's the newly re-elected chairwoman of the Government Advisory Committee of ICANN. Heather's uh, with the Government of Canada, uh, when we leave her any time to do anything for Canada. Uh, let's see, any board members back there? Coming back, George Sadowski, who's sitting there, a uh, board member. Uh, and uh, if you ever have uh, doubts that I shouldn't have been uh, sitting here, uh, he's the one who interviewed me so hard, he could have kicked me out of the row. But if you're unhappy with me, he's the man to talk to, even though there was a whole committee. But he's the one who ended up having to come and interview me for six and a half hours nonstop. Uh, I thought I'm going to die at the end of the interview, but here I am. Uh, and let's see, uh, any other board members? Of course, Chris Despain, who's been our gracious moderator. Chris, uh, uh, is, a, is a, as he said, the uh, prior chair of the CCNSO Council uh, and uh, someone with deep, deep understanding of how things happen here in this world. And to my left here is my partner, uh, Dr. Steve Crocker, our chairman, uh, our most gracious chairman anyone could have uh, and uh, the best boss I've ever had. Uh, really, I, I, it's a remarkable relationship we've built, and I'm very lucky. I also want to say one thing. Um, often, it appears that it's all of you and then I can. All of us are I can. It's just that maybe some of us are working at it in our day jobs. But frankly, I'm finding out that some people amongst you work more than us as a second job for I can. Uh, so all of us are I can. And, and having said that, though, I'd like to ask the staff of ICANN who's here to stand up so we recognize them because we're really working very, very hard, uh, even though it's our main day job. So please, all of you stand so people see the ICANN staff.
they're the people who make me look good and like I know what I'm doing. But they really do the work. So thank you for that, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Steve, would you like to make a few closing remarks? We talk a lot about the bottom of the process, and you've just seen uh, Fadi uh, uh, give recognition to the staff, and I will do the same. Uh, he calls me the best boss he's ever had. It's real easy. I just uh, we get lucky with Fadi, and then we just say yes, and uh, he thinks that uh, uh, he gets along well with us, but he does a fantastic job, and the rest is easy. Um, and all the rest of the staff, it's really quite remarkable. Uh, I open by saying that uh, I can – um, as much attention as we get and as intensively as we work and focus on the things that we work on are really part of a, br of a broader system. And I think that that's uh, very important to, uh, to keep firmly in mind. Uh, ICANN was created um, about 14 years ago in response to a set of needs that were uh, coming to a head uh, and the needs for having an organized and uh, independently administered oversight of the domain name system, the addressing space, support for the IETF's addressing uh, 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 protocol parameters, and, <coughs> and the like. Those functions had been supported uh, less formally uh, for a very long period of time out of what was fundamentally the research community that had also generated the original technology and it was time to formalize that, pr that process. That led to the creation of ICANN, and I think one of the things that we uh, hold very dear, we keep very strongly in mind, is that we serve uh, the community, that, that our sole reason for existence and our uh, fundamental basis for legitimacy is that we are of service to the community, not that we own anything, not that we control anything, not that we have uh, any uh, natural rights to anything. It's quite the opposite, that, uh, that we derive our legitimacy solely from whether or not we perform the service and perform the services well that, uh, that the community needs. That's a, um, uh, a rather strong uh, organizing principle and motivator. It is what keeps uh, some extraordinarily talented and, um, and committed people uh, involved and working together as a team and uh, embracing uh, the openness that is uh, the hallmark of the Internet and certainly the hallmark of the ICANN community. So with that, uh, I think we are all ready to bring this session, and indeed uh, this is what I think the last session for, for most of us here uh, to a close. So thank you all. Thank you, everybody.